God damn it, that two more, one more added. How many fucking missions are here? What do you want, Gav? Fuck. You all right? Something troubling you? Uh, no more than usual. It's just... Edda's baby will be coming soon, and I wanted to make something for it. I'm sure she'd like that. Back in the north, families would always make gifts when a bairn was on the way. Yeah, I let the little tykes know they were welcome in their new homes, like. So, what's the problem? Well, the problem is that Edda's due any day now. I don't know if I'll be ready in time. Is there anything I can do to help? Hmm. You know, there just might be. All right, then. What exactly are we making? A good luck charm. But not just any good luck charm. Not just any. No. One made from the feather of a silver chocobo. <laughs> There's not luck in all the realm, or so we used to say back home anyway. Thing is, they're hard to come by. Had Otto and Karen check with their suppliers, but nothing. I'd try and track one down myself, only... Only the big day is fast approaching. And that's all you need, a feather. That or the bird whose arse it's attached to, aye. I was gonna start by asking around with travelling traders plying the northern borders. Well, there's no shortage of those passing through Martha's. I think I might make that my first port of call. I'll let you know if I find anything. You're a good friend, Clive. I won't forget this. Is it my chocobo? Silver? Ish? Or is my chocobo a different kind? Alright. Okay. Gotta check the email. Or the mail. Before that? Holy shit! Let me see. I'm still missing some. I'm still missing some spot. Alright. Where are you? Well, Sunborn emblem, okay. Alright. Rare's kiss. The Play Hearth signboard? What the hell is this? I don't remember. Oh, the I dying, okay. The helmet? We, we just took the helmet. I thought fucking Joshua was going to wear it. He said he's going to borrow it. But no, we just put it here. And the sword. Okay. The concern for Jill. What the fuck is going on? Though her icon brought her much suffering, the loss of Shiva weights in the heavy on her heart. And we will be poor, we'll be poor friends indeed, and we do not seek to lighten that burden. Even only a fraction before we depart to the sky. I will speak on more in private. If Joshua was worried about Jill, I should go and speak with him. Fuck. I have two more side missions, god damn it. Okay, uh well, let's go talk to him now. What's going on? Is he oh, where is Jill? I haven't seen her for a while. Okay, what's going on? Joshua. I read your message. And you're right. Jill is different. I don't think I'd realized how different. But since we've returned from Drake's spine, i felt it more and more. I suppose it's not hard to imagine why. She doesn't think she belongs anymore. And that's why we need to remind her she is still one of us. To let her know that we still need her. Now more than ever. That you still need her. But how to do that? When last we were truly close, we were but children. Of course. Do you remember the time we accompanied Father on his annual tour of the duchy? And Jill and I broke from the procession to ride up Man's Hill. 
To see the snow daisies, I remember. It was the first time Father had allowed us to join him. And when he realized you were missing, he had the entire retinue down to the pot boys combing the countryside. <laughs> in the rain. <laughs> a thunderstorm forced us to take refuge in a grove of oaks before we'd even made it halfway there. It was the Lord Commander who finally found us, and needless to say, he was none too pleased. Then it seems you and Jill have unfinished business. What do you say? Man's Hill. It's not that far. Oh, true. Though I suspect it is also much changed. Little in Southern Rosaria remains as it was when we were children. You're saying I should go and scout the area for bandits? Uh, I'm saying we should first go and see if there are actually still any snow daisies left. <laughs> what would you do without me, Clive? Hmm. Give me a sec. I gotta go and fucking deliver some stuff, goddammit. Alright, I got your stuff. I hope it's worth it. Mid, tell me this is all you need. Aw, oh, you make it sound like I asked you to save the world or something. Tell me this is all you need. It's most of what I need. After you left, I went over the figures again, and I realized I'd forgotten a one and a zero. <sighs> and? And a cogwheel. Just a tiny one. Though, that's the problem. Gears that small are a bastard to make, and I may have lost the one Blackthorn spent a fortnight toiling over. Wait. The children. When they took apart your scales, there was a tiny brass gear. Now that I think about it, I... They... Didn't use it... When we put the scales back together. The young'uns? But why would the... You know what? I don't want to know. I'll keep working on the model. You go and find that cog. <laughs> Finally, we... We get the... Uh, the, the fucking gear back. What the fuck? Has... Middadol mentioned a new project yet. Hey, where, where's that? Where's that gear? Sid, is Mid still hiding from us? She wasn't hiding. She's fine. She's just busy working on her next project. A new invention? What is it? What is it? Is it an airship? I bet it's an airship! Do you think she'll let us help? That just so happens to be why I'm here. She needs something special, something only you three can provide. A brass gear. A tiny one. One that might fit on, say, a set of scales. Oh, the one you forgot! We remember! We saved it, just in case. It's in the bag of bits. Since your lesson, we've been disassembling, then reassembling everything we can find. All the pieces that are left over, we keep under our beds, just in case. That's... good to know. Look! I found it! Is that all? Just the gear? We have more parts if Mid needs them. That's all for now. But I'll let Mid know about your... hoard. Just in case. Thanks, Sid. What have they uh, disassembling? Uh, that's what I want to know. <laughs> what what else they were taking apart and uh, uh, repairing it? Well, did they have it? They did. And they kept it somewhere nice and safe. Will it work? Will it work? He's perfect! You're a genius, Clive. What exactly are you going to use it for? Only the most important job of all. The wings aren't going to move on their own. But with the right cog in the right place? Well, you just wait and see.
That should do it. Here goes nothing. wasn't supposed to fly, was it? Of course it was supposed to fly. Wouldn't be much of an airship if it didn't. Honestly, these bloody engines are driving me mad! I was so sure this would be the day she saw it. The Mithril engine was made to make dreams come true. But maybe this is one dream the world's better off without. Show folk how to take flying. It won't be long till they're raining death down on each other. People will lose their homes. Children, their mums and their dads. Like I lost mine. I'm sorry. So am I, Clive. So am I. Sorry that I have to choose. Do I follow my head, or do I follow my heart? Good question. The first time I stood on the deck of your ship, felt the wind in my hair. It was like I was flying, but imagine how it would feel to actually do it. My dad always said there were two ways of living life. Chasing a dream or shuffling to your grave. And he were right. Right about a lot of things. Not that I like to admit it. People need dreams to chase. Especially in a world like this. Right. When this is over, I'm going to take all my Mithril engines to Zemeckis and sling them over the edge. I won't have my dream end up turning into someone else's nightmare. But all that hard work... All that hard work will not be used for war, Jamie. But it ain't like it'll be gone. Tell me, Clive, have you ever been on a treasure hunt? Not since Joshua and I were boys. Why do you ask? Because I'm going to bury the engine schematics and leave behind a little riddle telling people where to find them. A really hard one, so that only the most dedicated dreamers will ever be able to work it out. <laughs> I can picture it now. Some daft general squinting at the words with a gormless expression on his mug. Like that one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Of course. If I'm putting this engine at the end of a treasure hunt, I'll still need to make it a treasure worth hunting for. Won't be much of a prize if it couldn't even make a toy boat fly after all. <sighs> My dad always said, dream big. But it in the size of a dream that's important, is it, Clive? Only that it's a good one. And I reckon I've got a fair few good ones left in me. I'm sure you do. God damn it, I fucking knew it. Okay, that's all the... Yeah, that's all the side missions. Alright. Is that... 
I think that's my target. The escape uh, creature. <laughs> it has to be. It's a behemoth. It has to be the fucking other target. Fuck, I forgot to talk to the blacksmith. I forgot. Give me a second. Let me go back to the blacksmith. Fuck! I forgot to, like, get get the, the, the thing. The legendary belt. Alright. That has to be the other fucking behemoth that fucking ran away who couldn't tell from friend to foe. Alright, you sorry bitch. I took down, I believe, your brother. Oh, fuck! The Behemoth King? Okay! That I did not know! What?
just fucking die. He's so a bitch. Fucking bastard, he's a rank uh, S. What do I get? I got this. What ooh, what could I use that for? No match for you, I toggle. Oh fuck. Was that the creature I saw? I don't remember. Ready go? Fuck. Fucking behemoth king. What's that over there? Is that like one of my targets too? Is that a chunk? No, that's not a chunk. But what the fuck are you? He's an ogre. Okay, it's not my target. If I can see his name, it's not my target. Right. The entire village looks abandoned. Now. Which house would a book where I'm living? God damn it. Give me a sec. There we go, somehow I got the potion. Well, intelligence training report. In the wake of the tragic fire at the Karen in 873. Uh, depletion of our most highly practiced intelligence of our mainland stronghold. We are instructed to re uh, redouble the training, uh, canceling maneuver, and uh, improvise weaponry and assassination technique, and dispatch a promising volunteers to Stoneray for inspection. This report details the progress th uh, made by the stronghold Garnick. Royal intelligence. This is a Royal Army logbook. You take this from the local barracks. Where the fuck he has it? What else he has? Let me check. Let me steal some of this shit. All right. What's this? Complete bounty of the Banes. The tail wiper. White flower, a black rose, the ladder of the witch gives of an inky gale when you cut or crush. The tribesmen of the Northern Storm pick their skin with the oaken needles to suck a. Soak in such drawing cautious pattern upon their arms and legs to honor of their heathen god. The gauze in passing the intoxicated that single drop takes by mouth might be a result of cramps but most painful for five days and five nights, or applies to a wound in certain death. <laughs> His interests were certainly varied. Uh the Mughals, okay. I want to talk about the Mughals. No spirit or sprite appears more often in the Velstein folktale than the humble Mughals. Through love, they are occasionally painted a mysterious soul in a kin to the pixies or imp. Most stories uh, depict them as a clumsy yet uh, agile spirit who delighted in the re uh, helping mankind with their daily labors. They are said to have sweet tooth, leading the common suspicious that one must leave. Uh, one must not leave cakes or other sweet meats uncovered overnight. Let's not remain but a crumble coming morning. In appearance, they are described as being covered in head and toe and soft white fur, excepting the small dark wings by which they are somehow able to take flight and the brightly colored pom pom that they protrude from the top of their head. And yet, there is one detail regarding the Mughals that most finding more re re remarkable than even the orbs that top and bro. The fact that the creatures actually exist. Preposterous, I hear you I hear you cry. 
Everyone knows that the Mughals are stuff of legends. I quite agree, but every legend has to base its truth. As the case of the Mughals, the fact they may be the December of the fiction. Ancient mysteries listed in the White Mole, uh, whose feet do not touch the ground. Among the beasts of the realms, the illustration beside the names, why, is none other than the Mughals. Of course it's true that the creatures are known, not known to still, still survive in the twins in the modern day. Perhaps their miniature wings carry them other climbs. Perhaps they were hunted to extinction. Or perhaps they, uh, perhaps, just perhaps, they still live among us, hidden away from human views. You gonna say anything about that? The Mughals? The Mughals in our fucking hideaway? The fall of the bears. Oh! From the distance! I wanna know about this. The emergence of the first magic adept was widely hurled as a gift from the gods. Indeed! The title which those with the gift that came to the commonly known as most likely a uh, contraction of the bears of the heavenly blessing. The words used to the uh, Tribune of that time, those born with the blessing were lauded as a living crystal, uh, crystal and granted high official or office and plentiful reward of their status and as a chosen one. Over the years, their re uh, reverence for their kind would become full-fledged uh, religion led by the bearers themselves and the deployment that they would prove faithful. Okay, so they... uh. They, the people thought they were chosen. Okay, I was thinking about that. Why the hell they, you know, like, they fucking hate bears all of a sudden. Maybe they tell us what that. The diver, uh, the diver nation of the time was, uh, unanimous of their disapproval of the founding of the church. While the authorities had their, uh, had for years welcomed bears into position of power, and know their own structure of state. Uh, they were mistrusting of the organization led by the bearers, for bearers' efforts were immediately made to chasten the church and its followers, banning members from holding office and evicting adherents from their homes, and breaking up meetings by force. The church responded by the forming a volunteer army uh, to resist their persecution, and yet it continues creating a cycle of ever-increasing bloodshed and rancor. In a grift, uh, growing rift between those two, uh, born with a blessing and those without. What began with beating and street clashing would eventually spill over into an all-out war that consumed the greater part of the twins for nigh and generation. It decimated the population of men and bearers both the Duluk of blood. That stained the land crimson and left an even more lasting mark upon the mind of the Vistahai peoples. After the bearers' last resistance was crushed, the nation of Vistahai uh, came together and signed the Continental Accord that uh, initialed the system of slavery. That persists across the realm of the days is well known phrase bearers are other than human. As roots in the bitter of the war of the years before, being the unblessed that only excuse, uh, ex uh, nah. Only excuse of those cantation of rebusal of loud bearers to decide their own dis destiny. This is it. But if what it says is true, I need to get this back to the hideaway. Hey, damn. The bearers were had so much power they were using it. God damn it. Because it's their fault. Leaving so soon, stranger. We've been watching you. From a distance, so to speak. Subtle. I know who you are. Then we need not waste time on introductions. Hand me the book. Leave it in our care and return to your life. Your care? Do you mean to burn it or bury it? That is not my decision to make, but by one means or another, its contents shall be removed from the common record. Then I'll have to politely refuse. I won't let you erase our history. Then we find ourselves at an impasse. Very well. 
The book can just as easily be pried from your dead hand. Let's see, shall we? Where the fuck do these guys shoot from? What the fuck? They, they just come out of nowhere. They're like fucking ninjas. Impressive. But we have other means. We shall claim the book yet. Why do you want it so badly anyway? It lays out in no uncertain terms the vanity and avarice of mankind. It tells the shameful history of the persecution and oppression of a gifted few by a giftless many. Would you say that this interpretation was correct? I don't know. You don't know. Your sword may be sharp, but your wits are dull. So let me answer for you. There is no correct interpretation of history. That a series of events took place may be proved beyond a doubt. But there can be no single, immutable explanation as to why they came to pass. It is a question of numbers and of belief. If enough people believe that a set of events occurred for a reason, that belief becomes the truth. So you're trying to control the truth? We are trying to protect people from themselves, from knowledge that would bring them naught but pain. That is all. You may keep the book, for now. The world is small. We shall meet again. Until then. Wait! Let's get this back to Vivian. Perhaps she can explain what that was all about. Goddamn bastard. I wanted to fight him or kill him. He was a Come piece on, of shit. Man. Wait, let me see. What kind of... Where are the places that could fucking be my target? Maybe right here. And let me go check over there. <laughs> Maybe I'm right. Where is it? Uh, okay, just over here. That'll do, girl. Uh, why did I stop? This must be the orphanage. Hopefully, the registry is still here. I fucking do that. It fucking scared me for a while. This is the noise it made. Uh, is it right here? Uh, the Kingdom of Walu, hereby incorporated institution with uh, the juvenile barriers are granted opportunity to give themselves the service to state as soldiers. Fucking lying bitch. Disposed of. Today's exercise will consist of the press yard 20 sandbags for such duration instruction shall 
<coughs> Sorry. The furnace uh, burn essentially actually increase. Life combat by one of three hellhounds de depending on performance. Conditioning. This is nothing short of torture. Herman wasn't exaggerating. It's a wonder he survived this place. I recently learned that my own daughter was among the children turned to the stones by the brutal training I subject them to. I had not such as thought of her since handing her over to the authorities as a babe. But in uh, inquiries from the military confirm it, it was her. I've been torturing my own flesh and blood, and now I see her uh, everywhere. Today one of the children smiled at me in the hopes of receiving a few scraps from my table. It was her smile. The smile she had heard it from her mother. The mother I killed for giving birth to a bearer. Motherfucker! Their ghosts have all come back to haunt me. My daughter, my wife, all of them, all those children, so many have died at my hands. I can bear the guilt no longer. So I have decided tomorrow, I too must die. I will be the last order I will give to those poor rich. The last torment I subject them. I will command them to tear their uh, tear my limbs from limb to limb and enter my uh, accursed course beneath the white tree whose crook hand reached to the sky in a subclection. And beside me, my shame, my curse, and the records of their names. All those I have wronged. This reads like a suicide note. Did the director go through with his plan? There's only one way to find out. Wait, there was a... I thought I saw an icon around here. Or oh, what's that Torgal? He's talking about that tree? Oh shit. Give me a sec. Oh. A forked white tree. This must be the place. Could he really be buried here? There's something hidden among the roots. Let's see. This must be the registry. Ah, oh, shit. Let's see, hands 10 years old. Uh, litification. Alfred, 9 years old, succumbed to a conditioning. Litification, imication. Discipline for attempting, attempted flight. Attempted flight? What the fuck is attempted flight? Succumb to conditioning. Okay, conditioning, location, cave vision. What the last one? What's that? What's the dots? So many names. This place was a slaughterhouse. And where is the architect of all this misery? It was only a matter of time, I suppose. Is this the bitch? This place is cursed. Oh, I hate this guy. Nice try. Too slow. Fucking bastard. Nice try.
always making that noise. Alright. Mm, I don't want any of these. I'm done here. Let's get the registry back to Herman. Uh, could they be here too? My, I don't know. We check that later. Gotta do all the side quests first, damn it. We're almost done. We're almost done. Oh, fuck. Right, how far is... Not that far. I need to find the chocobo. That's not a silver Let's hope one of the merchants here has what Gav needs. Excuse me. I'm looking for something. Oh, well, then I'm your man. <laughs> a silver chocobo feather. Oh, or maybe not. Though you're not the first to mention the bird around here. There was a man stopped by the rest not long ago claiming he was attacked by a silver chocobo. Near some gutted hovel not far from Eastpool. Most took him for a braggart and a liar, but who knows? Perhaps there was some truth to his tale. We'll see. Thank you. Wait, did I go and check on him? My, my chocobo's silver, isn't it? How do, traveler? You've the look of a man who could do with a new whetstone? Or perhaps a bawdy etching of the Vicerine? Uh, maybe another time. I'm looking for a silver chocobo feather. If that's the case, rumours are all you're likely to find. No one has seen a silver chocobo for years. Word is they were all hunted for their feathers. Some northern nonsense about bringing good luck. <laughs> Didn't bring them much, nor their bows. If any are still out there, I reckon they'll be doing their damnedest not to be discovered. You're probably right. Thank you anyway. Mark. I've been hunting down? I didn't know about that. Okay, my chocobo's albino. She is not silver. <laughs> Oh fuck! Few rooms going spare night. What emergency uh, I talked to? Oh, last one. Maybe he knows. Can I help you with summer? You wouldn't happen to sell silver chocobo feathers, would you? <laughs> I deal in fruit, not fancies. But if it's fancies you're after, I suggest you try Rhiannon's ride. Was a silver chocobo seen there? Oh yes. If you believe the ravens of a madman. It wouldn't be the first time. A silver chocobo sighted in the hills near Rhiannon's ride. It sounds... Almost too good to be true. But... Since I'm already here... Is my chocobo not silver? Fly Ambrosia. I think it's actually silver. I want to see this chocobo. What's the difference with that chocobo and mine? Tracks. They're not left by bandits for a change. Alright. Are you in here? tracks and these look fresh the chocobo was here and recently perhaps it still is wait how the fuck is chocobo is here then that small fucking house it can't be in here is it I don't this is his home anything. oh it's his home fuck
It's all right. I'm not going to hurt you. Just borrowing a feather for my friend. Thank you. Let's get this back to Gav before they change their minds. He looked the same like as my chocobo. You say my chocobo is not, it's not special. You saw it, bitch. It doesn't exist. <laughs> oh fuck! What the fuck? What's this one? Priceless. What was this one? I, I don't remember. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it, it's, I think it's to uh, hop out jail. This is the place, but... I'm sorry, Clive. There's no weapon spared. What do we do now? We keep looking. Man's Hill cannot be the only place where snow daisies grow. Perhaps, but... It's the only place I know of. You of. Then why not ask someone who might know of another? Someone at the backyard. To the hideaway then. Alright. Finally. I could get rid of all the, the fucking missions I have. That I've been holding. Most of them I, I think I need to do one more. All right. Let's hope one of the gardeners knows where to find snow daisies. I want to know. I found your book and someone tried to kill me for it. How special is this book? Well, we already read it. Vivian. I found it. The book you lost. You... you found it. Thank you, Clive. Even though I asked this of you, I was not entirely sure it would be possible. I feared the executors had seized every copy. I met with one of these... executors, and I convinced him to let me keep it. He told me something. That the truth is just a matter of collective belief, and that if enough people believe a lie, that lie becomes the truth. It does. But it also means that the truth is not immutable. That it can be changed. Provided that those who wish to change it can convince enough people that their perspective is the correct one. As the sad history of the bearers proves. You said that the book inspired you to become a scholar. It did. Or its author, rather. She was a heretic, you see. A firebrand and a dissenter. A gallows stood ready for her in every corner of the realm. And by shunning society, or perhaps being shunned by it, she stumbled upon a truth so potent that an entire realm trembled at the prospect of its utterance. I, too, have always felt somehow set apart from the world of men. A stranger to my own species. She taught me that my solitude was not a curse but a gift, and that, though my journey to the truth might be a lonely one, what I found at my destination would be more than worth the cost. Do you still feel that way? That you're not... one of us? Honestly? I'm not entirely sure anymore. Since coming to the hideaway, I find my thinking somewhat... clouded. Perhaps the result of studying mankind from a rather closer perspective than I had intended. But the more I study, the more I find value in this perspective. In looking not from the outside, but from within. So if you'll permit me, 
I'd like to continue my work here. Remember, Clive. When enough people believe, belief begets truth. Give the men and women of this benighted world the gift of truth. Make them believe in you, as I do. I'll try, Vivian. I'll try. God damn it. Am I able to finish all my fucking collection with all these There's side quests? About it. See. What about you, Gab? Will you it give me that no fucking feather? trouble at all. Still, I appreciate it. What happened? Clive, you're back. How'd you get on? Any luck? Any luck, you say? Crystals crack. Is this what I think it is? Where in the hell did you find it? It's a long story. Right there on the road to Eastpool. <laughs> Who'd have thought it? Everything up there's been abandoned for years. The empty cabin made for the perfect shelter. Though I fear my presence may have forced the poor creatures to look elsewhere. Don't blame yourself, Clive. The blight's right on Eastpool's doorstep. They'd have had to move on before long. Even if you hadn't have turned up. They'll find a new home. Trust me. After all, that's what us endangered animals do. Anyway, what matters is, you managed to nick us one of their quills before they could run off. And now all that's left is to fix it to the carving. I didn't know you could carve. Mm, reckon there's a lot you don't know about me. Like the fact I'm as good with a whittling knife as I am with a sword. And that bone ember gave me's a dream to work with. What did you say it was from again? An Avis? But it weren't your avis, Sid. I slew one of my own at last. So all those long nights in the pit finally bore fruit. I'm proud of you, Ember. <laughs> Don't speak too soon. I ain't done my trial yet. There we go. What do you think? I think if you ever hang up your scouting cap, you'll be able to make an honest living. Now will I. <laughs> I should go and see if Ed is awake. Give him my best. Eh, you can give it to yourself. Come on. Give me a sec. Oh, never mind. I think my mission is up there. Oh, God damn it. Wait, what's this? What's this? Don't tell me there's another target. I defeated the, the, the uh, Behemoth King. Are you shitting me? The Wailing Banshee. What the fuck? I have another one. I have. Let's see. Nine. This is a cre I think this is the creature I saw before, but I didn't see it. I had to go back and find it. When I first entered the uh, Walloon. Ah, me lords. How are you feeling? Well, thank you. Is something wrong wrong no nothing like that uh, uh what it is is uh go on please it's beautiful 
Did you make it? We did. I, ah, uh, it's from all of us here at the hideaway. Your new family, like. It's a good luck charm. We may come up north when a bairn's on the way. I, I, I mean, a, a baby. To let him know that they're part of the family, too. Oh, I, I, ho I hope you like it. I... I don't know what to say. I thank you, my lords. For everything. If there's anything you need, just let us know. I will. Ah, oh, Clive. Fancy a swift off. I'm thirsty. I could be convinced. Don't you think you've had enough? No, we're celebrating. I'm gonna be a father. <laughs> I think Edda might have something to say about that. Ah, you know what I mean. Bit of light in these dark times. <sighs> it wasn't long after me tenth name day, my mum told us she was with child again. I was over the fucking moon. I was looking forward to having a little one to lord it over. What with me being the runt of the litter. Thought I'd finally have a chance to prove to the world that I could be a big brother. Imperials came the day she went into labor. Had myself a baby sister, and then I didn't. Me whole family gone in a blink, while I hid in the cellar like the spineless little arsehole I was. Great brother I turned out to be. I'll never be a leader. And I'll never be a hero. I'm just a daft little dog who comes running when his master calls. I'll never be like you, or Sid, or Jill, or even Toggle. <laughs> Have you finished? Maybe. Do you know why you're our best scout? Because you don't need anyone to hold your hand. Without your resourcefulness, your courage, your determination, I don't know where we'd be. Maybe hanging off a cliff like... Uh... That was only the once. Exactly. You learned from it. And here you are after founder knows how many missions stronger for everyone. <laughs> and let's not forget Rosalith. Who was it who freed me from the dungeon? Who was it who ran to Jill's rescue? That would be me. Because you're our brother, Gav. My brother. <sighs> Your brother. Which means that when the time comes, I get your room and your sword.
I may have had one too many. You may have had ten too many. I said I was thirsty. Gotta get back to work anyway. After I walk this off. Uh, Clive? What is it? Thanks for, you know. I know. Winter Mead? What the hell? Okay. I knew he had like some kind of feeling for her. Ah, fuck. I didn't know about his past. I think I gotta talk to this guy who's all the way in the top. Alright then, I found you. I found the book, or the log. I hear that you traveled to Ash, Sid. Did you by any chance recover the names of my fallen friends? I did. Yes. If I may, the bearer registry. The director was a brutal man. He got no worse than he deserved. The registry was all I found beneath the tree. There was no sign of a body. Nor any record of what happened to the children after the orphanage closed. I pray that at least some of them survived. All their names are here. The ones we lost. My friends. My light in those dark times. I can still remember their faces, like it was yesterday. Children who were taken from their bunks in the morning, never to return. No explanation ever offered. They'd be happy to know that you survived, Herman. But why did I make it out alive, when so many others died in that awful place? It's not your fault. And blaming yourself won't bring them back. One of their memory. See that their names live on. That way at least. They're never truly gone. Thank you. Sid. I'm going to write a book. An account of the horrors of Badbach. And the spirit of those its custodians sought to crush. All of Valisthea will know of our suffering. And in the name of those I lost, I will not let it happen again. Neither will I. These records would have been buried for all eternity, were it not for you. <laughs> Thank you. to go.